All right, hey everybody, and welcome to Zenfolio Live. I'm Robert with Zenfolio Customer Success. Today we're going to be talking about creating an amazing senior portrait experience. I've got a really special guest uh, I'm going to introduce in just a second. We're going to talk about things like building trust, creating an atmosphere, collaborating with your client, and helping build your client confidence. Well, hey, Joe, really quick, can you just kind of give us a little backstory about how you got into photography? Well, photography kind of just was an addition to what I was actually starting to do. What I was trying to do in the beginning is uh, do graphic design. It just went hand in hand. And I began picking up little jobs here and there. Uh, and then I realized that, hey, this might actually pay the bills. So working under different photographers taught me a lot. Uh, even though I have some schooling behind me, working with them, they're looking at their systems really helped me. I learned a lot in a short time and then going on my own, it just, it felt like second nature. What is it about senior portraits that you love? Uh, they keep me young. I think <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Keep me young. You know, but you know what I, I do? There's so many different things I can touch on. They're just really paying attention to their clothing, they're paying attention to their hair, they're paying attention to everything, their cars. And I like to just jumble all that together and put it in a picture. The end result is my favorite part. The, the smile, the look on their face, the look on the parents' face when they pick up their orders. What is a typical senior portrait session like for you guys? Typically, it's an hour to an hour and a half session. So that's it's a lot to cover. So I learn to take, if I can, five minutes to up to 10 minutes as soon as they come in to go over outfits. Because that's like the number one thing is to know what we're going to do from start to finish. So when they come in, we have someone greet them. They have them spread out all their outfits. When I come in, I'm ready to look and see what, what their thoughts are. And that's my first question after I look at all the outfits is which one's the most important outfit to you? And uh, right away, this happens every time I look at an outfit and I already, I'm already favoring one because it might be something that I've, an area that I'm thinking that, oh, you, this would look great there. Or it might be even something I saw that morning, like this one. This is the outfit I'm looking for. I want to take this outfit over here. But I always start the same way and ask them, is there anything that you know you want to do? Um, let me know. And I always ask the parent. And most of the time, and I think this is where we've got to the point where everything's just all on my shoulders because of that trust factor. And, and it's pressure, but I like it. I, actually, I love it because I remember the days before where they would, they would, well, here, here's my grocery list. I want this, this, that, and the other. And I would look at them like, you, you know what? In my head, I'm thinking I can probably make this and, and create something better than what you're thinking. And so it all came out to, or it's come to what it is today is where they say, we have full trust in you, do whatever you do. And I basically would say, okay, this outfit, we can do indoor and do such and such, and so on and so on. And I, want, and I let them know too, I'm going to baby this outfit right here because there's something I have special for you. And I think they actually really look forward to that because they're like, I want to know what it is. But I kind of leave it in my arsenal where I keep them engaged. Um, I always prep them and let them and their parent know What's going to happen next after this session? And we're going to bring you back. We're going to put you in a viewing room. You're going to look at everything that we took today. And, you know, you could pick away at all your favorites and then we'll package you up. That's pretty much it. And part of that is music, too. When they come in, the, the vibes, everything has to be there. The vibes, the, the music, the sound, the smell. You know, everything just has to be just right for when they walk in. So it's like rolling the red carpet out in in a different fashion. Have you had a situation to where somebody was laying out, out outfits and you were just like in your head, you're like, <laughs> yeah, that one's not going to work. What is your tactic for getting away from that outfit? As far as the outfits go, we'll always photograph one. I'll show them how they're looking and so that they know that they didn't do anything wrong. but. During that time, we asked them, do you have a such and such type of outfit? Do you ever wear this? Do you ever wear that? 
And sometimes this happens because they're like, why well, just, they weren't as prepared as they should have been. And they grab whatever was in the closet instead of thinking it over leading up to their, their appointment. So we give them the benefit of the doubt. Okay, don't worry. What I'm going to do is we're going to do one outfit. I'm going to spend 15 minutes with you and I'm going to reschedule you. We're going to finish the, the remainder part. So when they come in, they are definitely prepared and ready to go. And so they'll show us the outfits and like, okay, this is, this is more like it. We definitely, so without offending them, because that's the last thing I want to do. And I'm not trying to make anyone feel bad. Uh, that's, that'll, that's, that'll blow up in my face. So, but they understand. They definitely understand when, when we describe them because we'll show them locations of pictures that we have in here. Do you have any, you know, I was thinking maybe something like this, or I, I would, I'll go on to some kind of, you know, it could be Pinterest or somewhere. It's like, you know what, this is kind of like your look and show them something. Why don't we create something like this? Do you like that? And they'll get excited about it. When they come in, they're just 100% ready. I want to come back really quick to, you said the sound and the smell. So first of all, how do you pick the music that you're going to have playing? Is that something you do on an individual customer basis? Do you kind of have them send you some information about the songs and artists that they're listening to? Or do you have like a general playlist that you use? Well, we, we team up in here pretty well. And so when I'm talking with them or the person that's greeting them and bringing them in the studio they might do the homework too. And then they, you know, what, so what kind of music do you like? Or what's your day to day like? Uh, what, what are your interests? So they're prepping them before me before I go in there. Or if they don't do it, I'm, I'm going to do it either way. So what happens is they kind of put on, they're like, you know what, let's add on a playlist. So, you know, so we use, um, you know, the, uh, we use Apple products. So we have music playing all over throughout the room. So we can easily just tell Siri to change something, to change it to a certain playlist. And then at some point when they're feeling comfortable and nothing explicit, it will, if they're comfortable, we'll let them choose something on their own. But it's most likely if we go on location outdoor, that we'll take music with us. Nice. And then what about smell? So you, you mentioned smell. I thought that was interesting. I, uh, I'm diffusing essential oil right now, so I'm not sure if that's what you guys do or use. There's a lot of science behind yeah. smell. If you go to grocery stores and department stores, they have smells being pumped in the air for very specific reasons. It's actually really interesting. So, so what do you guys do about that? What I try to do is go through the seasons. The seasons matter. And of course, being in Southern California, you don't you get very little of some seasons, but it matters. So if it's winter, spring, summer, I go with just smells that would be during those times. So there's like various of uh, places that will sell different kinds of candles, or they'll sell like the little packets. You know, we usually use those little packets, and we'll just you know we put them in little hidden, hidden spots. And I love it when people walk in and they, that's the first thing they say, oh, it smells good in here. I'm like, okay, good. Plus, plus during this pastime, good, they don't have COVID. But yeah, it's uh, it, it does matter. So we go through the seasons. And, and really quick, since you kind of mentioned that, how have you, because I know this has been a challenge for everybody, how have you had to pivot or shift the way you've done things specifically due to COVID? What have you kind of figured out that works well for you? As far as scheduling, we just made sure that we separate people um, far enough to do the cleaning process, uh, keep people safe. So it made it, it did make a difference. We made it feel like when people would come in, like there was nobody else in the building besides them and us. And so you, you could totally tell the difference. And that wasn't the case. We were completely busy, uh, probably more busy than we had been in a few years. Uh, and it was it was very surprising, but we were able to control the system. And it, and even with, with of course, in Folio, the bookie system just was amazing. So that that was the big deal for us because we can control the schedule, and we didn't have any any issues. So going back to the client experience, they walk in, they hear the music, they the smells are going. 
Um, one of the things that you said to me that I thought was really interesting uh, the other day when we were talking about this is that you spend the first little bit of your shooting time with them and then you go back and you kind of show them their their strengths, what they're doing really well and their and their weaknesses and things like that. So can you kind of talk about how you do that, what you use that for, how that process looks like between you and the client? It, it tends to be the almost the same thing for every client that comes in. They can come in with the most confidence or no confidence. What we try to do is make sure that they're comfortable, um, they're excited, and that confidence is is just where we need it because you can tell in the pictures. So during the time where people are unsure of is this coming out good, and we have mirrors all around them, left, right, in front of them, they're they're constantly checking themselves, and we're constantly letting them know what uh you know move the hair a little bit to the left pull it a little bit forward um yeah turn a little bit here for the angles during that time we just we'll do a few photographs and then i'll show them to them say okay this is what we're looking like so even if someone isn't smiling where right? i know they were doing a bigger smile earlier when no camera was on them that's a smile i want or i'm listening to a parent say Oh, that's a good smile. Do that again. And that's off camera. I'm coming in. Okay. I have to recreate that. I have to make sure that that's the smile I get because you know, mom, dad, or what have you had, they really love that the way they look. So, um, so I show it to them and I say, Hey, can you do a little bit more? Or how do you, what do you think? How, how's this looking like? What's this looking like to you? Um, so and it kind of, they build off that. So, and some of them just really get really charged, like, oh, no, no, I can, I can do better than that too. watch. And, and they just start to get comfortable at that point. Do you have parents in the studio while you're shooting the whole time? Is that common practice? Is it kind of up to the client how they want to do it? Because I know some kids like to be like, they don't want their parents in there. So how do you handle that? What's that, what's that look like? Most likely what's going to happen is for a first, um, First time, they usually end up coming with a parent, and the parent wants to see, oh, what's this all about? Or they're there to try to help. So I just we just try to make sure that everyone is engaged and there's not going to be any disruptions. So, and I will I will literally let someone know if I can if I can already tell or I can already feel it and have to just ask the parent, I'm going to have you walk out and leave them with me for a little while. I'll call you back in for the next outfit. And so if it starts coming to where there's some tension, um, that's part of, that's part of the, what I've taken on as far as the job, because I'm, I'm there when, once, once I'm committed, someone comes in, we're committed. We're completely committed to getting the very best picture that we possibly can. So part of that commitment makes me want to say, you're not helping the situation. I'm going to need you to just step out for a moment. Or if they do help, I need you to stay here. So it, it all, it's on a case by case. How do you get people to come alive in front of the camera who want to stay hidden in their shell? It, the hard part is getting them here to the studio. And even when I'm on the phone with someone, I'll tell them, just get them here. We'll do the rest. And so what happens is right away, I don't want to be or they're making me do it. I'm doing it for them. Um, just every kind of excuse they'll make just to hurry up and get out of there. And if they're coming in for an hour session, if I could bribe them with saying, if I could get all the pictures your parents brought you in for in half the time, do I have your attention? And yes, please just get me out of here. No problem. And then I go back to, okay, this is what we're looking like. And then most of the time they'll just say, Hey, you know what? I look kind of, I look pretty good. Hey, I'm okay with being here. That's okay. And it it, cha- it it just shifts. It just completely changes. Um I I've rarely had that not work. Very rare. So, I just kind of follow that system. I'm saying, "Don't worry, like this means a lot to them. I know you don't care to be here, but I get you in and out of here. Just follow my lead. I, I'll do what I need to do to get you out of here." And by that time, they're just like, okay, I have somebody on my side. And it, it works. So when you do the, the senior portrait sessions, do you include something for the yearbook pose as well? Or um, is, that, is, that, is that like an add-on that you guys do? 
Well, if they're booking what we call an elite session or mini elite session or an elite plus session, we yeah, they definitely will do the uh, yearbook pose in, in that session. They can just do a yearbook only session if they want to. But, you know, that customer acquisition kicks in because once they come into the studio, if they're only doing yearbook head pose, they look around. Again, they see someone they might know or they just like what we're doing. Well, not, not just the, the students, but the parents, they feel comfortable um, knowing, seeing what they see. They want to book sessions. So what is the trend for seniors that you're seeing right now? I appreciate trends and I don't want to sound any kind of like any kind of way that's discouraging. But for us, we actually just go by each client that comes in by their outfits and create something off of them. I don't tend to just go and do if everyone's doing some kind of certain field look, I actually pivot the opposite. It's like, okay, everybody's doing that. Yeah, we can do that. But now I have something else that I want to try that's new. For us, we create our own trend by doing that. So how do you deliver your images to your clients? Are they coming in studio and actually picking up the products that they ordered? Are you guys drop shipping them? How do you do that? We Yeah, we are scheduling everyone to come in uh, just like the way they came in from the first uh, appointment. So they have a specific uh, day and time that they'll come in to pick up their package. And, you know, we... We try to go above and beyond with the packaging, with the boutique packaging, the bags, you know, the logos written all over it, the tissue paper, everything just so it looks looks custom. And because you know everything that we put out, we want to make sure our stamp is on it for one. Uh, so they always remember where they got this from. This is like one of our boutique bags that we nice. use. I'm not trying to plug anybody, but just kind of show you. Show you what we do. This is like our smaller bag, little tote bags that we use. So, you know, they they're they're nice. And that's this is like what we end up putting in in those bags. So just like the different kind of items that we do. So, um, and also our our books too. So we'll do all the different nice. kind of poses in there so that all that goes in with our packaging sorry i'm looking for a certain page where did it go ah there it is wow there you go wow so and that i think that picture is online too but but yeah we we just try to make sure that from start to finish that we are um you know doing doing the very best for them it's just a good feeling that that we created another uh relationship with a family and so when they come and pick up, they're picking it up in this nice, you know, looking tote with, you know, feeling good that they made the right choice. Any advice maybe that you wish you would have known coming into photography or just any final thoughts or anything you want to leave with somebody maybe doing senior photography, getting interested in starting it, anything you want to share? In my experience, I gave away so much free time, so much free work, and it did what it took to be able to get to a certain level and once you get to that certain level and you start to find your niche or you start to find your style your look dominate your space dominate your space with around you dominate your space in your area dominate your city and just keep getting your name out there and if you believe in what you're doing it'll happen for you